Welcome back, everyone, to the Face of Collegiate Championship League. I am your caster slash host slash producer slash observer, Jagged. We have a great game for you tonight. We have Illinois State going up against UIUC, otherwise known as Illinois Urbana Champaign. We've got the map vetoes done for you already. We have Illinois State banning out theme with UIUC banning out club. We're going first to the Spain coast on coastline. We have the UIUC starting on the defense. Oregon will be our second map. We then banning out Consulate and Cafe, leaving us with a map three of Villa if we need it. We are just waiting for the players to ready up. But we do have both these teams coming off of wins last week. Both are two and two, looking to make it closer to that playoff bracket coming up in a couple weeks. Looks like our players are ready, so we should be getting into the match shortly. And we are ready, so we'll be bringing it straight into post line. Illinois State versus UIUC. Going into the operator band phase. On coastline, you expect something like maybe a... Uh, Maybe an Ace or a Habana ban on Coastline just to get some of that range hard destruction out of the way. Then possibly, you know, a, maybe a Jackal ban to try to get some of that roam clear off the board. Every once in a while you see a Blackbeard ban as you don't really want people sitting out in ruins. Though the bans vary. We'll be starting out with that Jackal ban like I mentioned. UIUC not wanting to deal with that roam pressure, that roam clear pressure perhaps. Uh, wanting to do a bit more of an extended hold upstairs or laterally. Uh, and having that jack off the board will assist them as it will make it a little bit harder uh, for them to be tracked and pushed out of place. Coming up now, we have Illinois State banning their first defender. It will be Blackbeard, another operator that I mentioned. Uh, Illinois State uh, not wanting to get cheese out of a headshot. Uh, so they are getting rid of that face shield on that operator. So we will have both ranged hard destructors up. Malusi also coming off the board from Illinois State. Uh, no surprise there, Malusi's wubs are very potent. Uh, makes perfect sense why they would want to get rid of her. One more ban off the board, and I'm assuming it'll probably be perhaps a Mira ban, uh, as that is another pretty typical coastline ban. We will see, and it is the Mira. Like I said, uh, she is very map defining. Uh, she does a lot of pressure, especially on that kitchen bomb site. That kitchen bomb site, and you know, it may having that mirror up uh, makes Penthouse uh, as unviable as it is currently, uh, even less viable when she is off the board. So we do have our rosters. We have our we have on ISU side. We have Snail, Patience, Hooked Up, Parabic, and Fortra coming in for Illinois State, and then UIUC is running Miami Fins, NK, Quite Fiber, Stormy Days, and the Mad King. Immediately off the board, we do see Snail on that Ace, that ranged hard destructor with that AK-12, a very deadly weapon. Ace, one of the best operators in the game as of current. Uh, one thing that is very interesting coming out from the defense, though, is the cap can. It's not being six. The Mad King will stick the cap can, put those traps, Defenders, hope to get some ankles caught around. We'll be going up to the Hookah Billiard site for our first round. Interesting enough that they're making rotates with the impact grenades. You do have a smoke shotgun, uh, but, you know, just speed it up. I guess they wanted to uh, impact it open. They have some to spare because the Capcan does have two himself. So they can still impact trick all three ace charges if they choose to do so. But they will be bringing that bandit, essentially, uh, to try to get rid or to try to deny some of that pressure onto that quad wall. Awful Ben batteries being placed there. Uh, ISU is going to have to go up underneath or send in one of those switch drones to get rid of those batteries. Shield coming out in the doorway of Hookah looking towards the balcony door with perhaps some ADS to protect it. We do see the attack get into the game now. Your Ash and your Zofia hooked up in Fortra coming in from the ruins spawn while the rest of your attack comes in from the east side. Fortra immediately opening a blue bar and hopping on a drone, seeing if it is clear underneath. The captain of the Mad King is going to be playing down in there. Whiffs come out. They take about 
an even a somewhat even engagement. Fortret takes a little bit more damage than he gives out. Mad King getting in the jungle with about 60% of his HP. But Fortra is already in the sight. In the blue bar, rather. And he will kill the Mad King. That is the opening pick coming up for Iowa State. Illinois State, sorry. But the Ash now has control of the blue bar. Can get the Bandit Batteries off the wall if he so chooses to do so. Elsewhere on the map, we have the Zofia up, hooked up, coming in behind him to support him. Parabic down by NK is over top oh, main. That is your Twitch down off the board. And any drones she has will now be useless except for cams. Hooked up holding an angle into Sunrise. Are you going to join it out real quick to see if there's anyone in there? There is not. But we do have the Bandit up, Meta, My, Miami Fins rather, on the full vibe stairs. He's been droned out and now... Looks like Hooked Up is potentially pushing up, but he looks away just to make sure he doesn't get looked over from the luggage balcony. NK still sitting top main. Bomb in Snail's hands, so he's okay for right now. Snail is currently... Where is Snail? He's currently on the roof just holding that luggage uh, angle. But you have your sledge of Hooked Up... Or of Patience, rather. Droning through VIP, clearing out. They are. They have to be aware that this Legion is still on this side of the map. Band, Band of Miami, Finn's getting a little bit aggressive. Hooked up, and he will not get the kill. But Hooked Up will take about half of his HP there. Now sitting on about equal health points. C4 comes out, but it is a whiff. Snail's now down on the roof from Quiet Fiber. Quiet Fiber, rather. Uh, as he tried to jump into luggage, Quiet Fiber is still sitting in Aqua. And it's getting really bad for ISU as they lose another Men of Miami Finn's. Takes up hooked up on the cool vibe stairs. Now all up to Fortra and Patience and a 2v4 with 30 seconds to go. The smoke babes are starting to come out now. Smoke's just gonna deny this entry into the bomb site area with 20 second 25 seconds left. The second one has come out and it is now popped. The Legion at NK has fallen back into 90. However, Fortra goes down to quite fiber. It's now all up to patience in a 1v4. 15 seconds left. It's not looking extremely likely. He gets the opening pick on NK. Gets a second on the Stormy. Well, 10 seconds. Ten he seconds has to find to two more. Will he find the first one? He may not. This run is all but over now. It's just the time he's to run out. Gets ahead of White Fiber into a 1v1 with Miami Finns, though. Fuck the clock will run out. Patience. A 3k to end the round. But impactless frags at the end of the day. UIUC wins on time. Strong opening round there from UIUC. They got the opening picks they needed and were, was able to just hold down the site until the timer ran out. Very good patience for them. That's not necessarily over peaking, uh, except maybe towards the end there. Uh, but the rest of the round, they did play that pretty well. ISU losing opening engagements that they shouldn't have lost. Um, early engagements that they shouldn't have lost. Unfortunate for Snail, he did drop the bomb in the luggage hallway as he tried to hop in. I guess they did not fully drone out Aqua. They assumed it was clear, but it was not. Going into Defense round number two now. That Cap King is on the Mad King is still going to come out as we head down to the kitchen service entrance. Captain Trap, I don't think he hit any ankles last round, but it'll be interesting to see if they hit anything this time around. Attackers have located a bomb. Rabbit now coming onto the Havana. So you're bringing up both those ranged hard breaches that I was Attackers talking about before the game the started. Uh, you have your Ace and your Havana. Most likely may try to go for a for a service wall opening if they can get lobby control. Otherwise, I'm not really sure why you're going to bring two sets of hard breach on this map. Unless they you just really like the gun, they could try to open up this uh, sunrise wall if they really wanted to. But we will see the Arbringen, the Bandit once again, all three walls. Plus, I, I kind of like this, what they're doing here with the Bandit. Are going to electrify that one service wall so they can't Havana through it. Are going to see Snail, and Patience, as well as Horabit come in. Interesting enough, the first H-Charge being used on a wooden barricade. Uh, very interesting, but it looks like it also does get rid of the barbed wire there. So, you know, not terrible, not too terrible beast. It's a little bit of a waste of hard breach, but they do have hard breach to spare. Hooked Up has already pushed all the way up through security, and there's nothing to contest them in lobby. If I ISU is aware of this, they can try to get that wall open in service if they get those bandit batteries off. However, there are players sitting up above for, Ill or for UIUC. 
Snail with the opening pick on the Stormy Days. I just your smoke off the board. That's a really, really poor uh, play from the smoke. You need those gas canisters to delay late into the round, and him being taken off first is uh, is not great if you're UIUC. But, like I was saying, you still do have pl players sitting above. You have the Jaeger up, White Fiber up on top. It looks like it's the only player currently sitting up top. I am missing something. Oh, I am. The Mad King is currently sitting up top as well. The Ash of Fortra inside of Sunrise. Aware that there might be someone on those cool five stairs, just trying to hold an angle. He's gonna try to drone it out real quick. For White Fiber shoots that drone. Now he's been Fortress been alerted to the position of White Fiber on the cool five stairs. He's gonna go for the engagement. Actually, he's just gonna walk into sight. I don't think the defense is aware of this, but the Mad King is gonna get hooked up. But Fortress will immediately refrag onto AK. In the middle of sight, abandoned by Miami Kids will get a frag. But we're not at the second as Fortra with the second kill has full sight control and the plant's going down from Snail. It's got to be a retake from UIUC. Impact grenade above trying to open up the floor. White Fiber pushing active. down the cool five stairs. Fortra gonna hit one of those Capkin traps, bringing it to about, about to half HP. But as White Fiber needs to enter, does not get the kill on the patience. The patience is now sitting at about one HP as the Mad King tries to push in through the bathroom. It is all but over this round. For just a formality needed to close the round out. Mad King, not really sure what to do. Not much he can do. And patience with the second kill will close that out for ISU. Solid round coming out from Illinois State as the Ash of Fortress recognized he could just walk into sight without too aggressively pushing through uh, the player on Cool Vibes. I think the biggest early problem there for UICUC was that Hooked Up was able to walk into security and take lobby control for free at about 20 seconds into the round. There was nothing preventing them from getting that map control laterally. Uh, you did have two players sitting upstairs, but Illinois State simply just decided, well, if they're up, we won't push them. We'll just take laterally. And losing your smoke about 30 seconds, 40 seconds into the round uh, was very poor uh uh, for UIUC. You will not be seeing the Capkin this round as the, the Mad King has six onto the Jaeger. They're going to try to go back down here and get to use that Jaeger ADS as well as the Wamai uh, to try to deny some of the projectiles coming out from ISU. Are only bringing one uh, bulletproof gadget being that the foil shield on Stormy Days. It's going to go there on the bomb chassis to try to watch the service entrance door. But I don't think that will do the Jaeger and the Lamai will do too much uh, to help it as all ISU has to do is just spam all their projectiles and you have three flashes and two smokes as well as four explosives, seven explosives really. Uh, you have seven explosives coming out from ISU. That shield's gonna die. It's just gonna be a question of when it happens. Um, but I do believe that the Lamai is perhaps a little unnecessary uh, given how they are, how the defense is only bringing one bulletproof gadget. But as we get into the round now, looks like it's gonna be the same take. Door already open. They did bring a Mozzie this time. It's different from last round. It's gonna prevent Snail from droning in immediately. They're gonna have to do something to get rid of that Mozzie pest on that door. But Snail's just gonna burn the drone, get it out. That's the Mozzie pest gone. Good adaptation from the last round. Flight Fiber is currently sitting in Lambo, or like sitting inside the lobby, but he's going to fall back to the bathroom immediately after hearing a drone. There is a player of Haravik, the Habana, sitting outside of the service entrance, or outside of the in Lambo. Keeps from Flight Fiber, not hitting their mark as Haravik gets a drone captured, but spots off the Wamai in the progress. And he's taking a lot of damage, actually gets killed by Fortress Reduce. Fortress is in the uh, in sunrise and patience going in for two. Stormy is in quite fiber fall. That's site control gone again, and it's gonna be a retake once again for UIUC. The Habana of Haravik holding the flank, and now it's all up to the bandit of Miami Fins inside of Blue Bar. You know, one v five needs to retake. Won't even get the first flawless round coming out for Illinois State as hooked up picks up the final kill. Good, lot, really good stuff coming out from Illinois State so far in this game. It's only been three rounds, but you've had two really good kitchen attacks. Uh, you know, the, the patience 
just making sure it's clear to hop in. Hops in and gets to that last round. Completely open up, opens up the site for Illinois State to push in. And we'll be going back up to Hookah uh, to see if UIUC can get a second round on the board. The Valkyrie coming out for the first time this game, as well as a zero pick. Ravik wanting to get some more of those cams, whether it be on flank watch or to try to maybe zap some of those bandit batteries when no one's looking. Uh, but those valve cams are going to be essential for UIUC to get the information they need. Last time they went up here on round one, UIUC was managed to pull it out uh, in, a in a 1v4 in the last 30 seconds. Now, Patience did bring it to a 1v1, uh, but he did run out of time as the defender of Miami fans on that bandit. He's been pretty much exclusively on that bandit tonight. Uh, he was sitting on full mods with about 5 HP. But we are going to see that that Jaeger smoke combo coming out. Try to defend that shield. Looking through the door. But we may see, we'll probably see Snail up on the roof again like last time. But where it went wrong in the first round was that Snail died to the Jaeger of quite fighters sitting inside of Aqua. So we want to see Make sure that that is drawn out properly if Illinois State wants to push through that avenue. Attackers are heading out to the fuse of bomb. Attack by release into the board now. We'll see where the attack pushes from. Harab or Fortra and Hooked Up are going to push through the ruined spawn once again. Ravik on that zero, currently sitting in spawn. Make seeing what's going on. They do spot off the lesion of NK sitting top main with yellow pings. He's <laughs> he is down. And ISU is fully aware of this. A rabbit shoots in another zero cam. Is he going to try to zap this legion? But the legion's fallen back. He's actually crawled all the way into theater. However, the Valk of the Mad King is lurking below. C4 out over nothing gained. And... You know, Mad King C4 is gone, but the opening pick is still in the favor of Illinois State with no refrag in sight. As I say that, the Mad King gets a kill onto Fortress, so your Ash is no more, and Quite Fiber gets a pick onto Hooked Up, so your Ash and your Zofia, your two entry ops, are gone. That Trying to figure out where exactly that kill may have come from. I'm not exactly sure where Hooked Up died right offhand. But Ace will open up the quad wall. Uh, good play by Snail as they were able to get the batteries off the wall. I mean, the half left now, quite five right about 10, 8, 10, 20 HP, but the man advantage firmly in the grasp of UIUC as they are up five, four, two, three. Arabic solo pushing, or no, sorry, patient solo pushing through the VIP hall while Snail and Harabic are on the roof droning it at all out. Snail seeing what he can find through the holes he's made. Not a whole lot of good angles there. Except, you know, you can see through the back. Karavik getting the late trade on to Quite Fiber. So, your defender of your Jaeger that was on 10 HP, no longer alive. Your man count back and even. But with less than a minute to go, defender the attacker is going to have to do something to try to get the map going. Stormy Days with the pick on to Karavik. Your zero gone. All up to Snail and Patience, but Patience will get the Mad Kings or Valkyrie off the board. No more C4 anyway, so she didn't, know, she didn't have one after about the first 40-50 seconds of the round. But you have three Smoke Babes and a Bandit Battery left in the round. Now you're going to come out here from Patience. Will it get anything? It will not. That's going to be the drone mod, I believe. But Patience, with his swing, works out for him. All up now to Stormy Days in a 1v2. He'll get the first on to Patience. All up now to Snail with on 20 seconds left to go. And then that mag, I believe, is empty for Stormy Days. That's a new load. Snail swing from the peak, and Snail will win the 1v1. Illinois State take round four. Up now, 3-1 to one on their attack half. Good stuff coming out of Illinois State once again. They lost, they got the opening pick, but then lost two as their Ash and their Zofia died both below. I believe that Zofia was probably most likely inside of of the blue bar or sunrise bar uh maybe might have gotten shot through the floor uh by the jaeger of the mad king or uh, the jaeger of quite fiber excuse me but uiuc opting to go back up to the hookah lounge billiards hall he's seeing the same lineups coming out as we did last round Haravik liking that zero so far gonna bring it out again this is one of those maps where zero works quite well 
it's mostly a frag heavy map you don't necessarily Defenders need all the explosive utility that you would attackers. need on other maps so it's a good map for zero it's actually bringing that hard breach charge as well a uh, good old-fashioned can opener uh so you're no longer relying solely on stale to get something open but i do imagine that can opener might be used on this VIP wall right here uh, while Snail opens up the quad wall with his ace cell discovered the location of a bomb. Bandit's still coming out from Miami Fins on UIUC. Uh, I assume he's going to use them on that quad wall once more. And we would be interested to see. All the Valkyries are actually out, so I'm not exactly sure where they went out. But the Mad King starting his round in the lobby. Perhaps going to rotate around and the play in bathroom for an early pick, perhaps. Is he just going to get on cam? He's just going to sit in the toilet. Uh, or should he actually get on cam? So, oh, okay, so one camp sitting there in the plant, one inside of Hookah, and one inside of Aqua. So, not terrible cam spots. I kind of like that one in the plant, uh, a little bit unorthodox. Um, but then you have two camps just watching sight. Uh, and Aqua grab it, going up to the roof and appears with the rest of his team. Patient's getting ready to push into VIP. And it looks like Karak's going to push him in with him. I believe they are going to try to go for that VIP wall opening. The Jaeger of NK, though, sitting inside a 90. Going to have to push him out of there if you want to get some real control. Downstairs in the lobby, hooked up, is in there. They have spotted out that valve inside the kitchen. Mad King's going to take a bit of damage, uh, either from the service door, I believe it's from the service door, or perhaps the Sunrise Bar. Patience early kill by NK. Uh, not exactly sure what he was doing. He was pushed all the way up. I think he was just going to try to walk into sight. A very poor uh, play from Patience that they're not really respecting the roam that's going on. Your Ash of Fortress sitting in the bar trying to hunt out this Valkyrie that's inside a kitchen. The Mad King wasting a lot of time down here as they're trying to pinch him out. Go for a lot of sprays, but will hit nothing. Fortress knows his position. Karavik does get the Mad King though. As the trade, they were needing that Valkyrie gone. Minute and a half left, he did his job though. Back to a 4v4. Gonna see now how the how the attack tries to adapt around this Miami thing. Still sitting on those cool vibe stairs. But he is the Jaeger of NK is not giving up his room just yet. He's watching. Very peculiar decision by Haravik to try to repel up and open that wall when Snail has three Selmas. I don't really know what he, the decision making was there, but that's the, probably the freest kill of NK's career. And Fight Fiber getting one, but immediately be trading back by Snail. Back now a 2v3 in favor of UIUC. Snail holding the flank, knowing that NK is going to try to peek. That's a free kill for Snail. 2v2 now, 40 seconds left. A lot of time for them to work with. Cook up. Currently in Sunrise, going to try to go up to Hookah. Snail taking a bit of gunfire exchange by the early days. First smoke out with 30 seconds left to go. Guess what? Up is going to sit on that repel, perhaps. Second smoke is out, though. It's smoking close. And that'll leave Snail a free line to plant on the bomb chassis if he chooses to do so. Miami Finn's playing on that bomb chassis. Last smoke out. It's, not, it's actually missed. Snail's not taking any HP damage from that the smoke system. grenade. Very unlucky for the smoke of Stormy Days, and now Snail's just gonna get on Repel here and just hold it down. Now has to be a retake from the defense. Miami Fins and Stormy Days in the 2v2 post plant, but Hookup's actually gonna go sit in ruins. One, <laughs> not exactly a one tap there for Hookup, but Stormy Days gets to get the trade. However, he's gonna find a long angle with the SMG-11 against a Zofia with a 2x. And hooked up with the one tap to finish it up. 4-1 in favor of Illinois State. Super unlucky there. That the smoke, the smoke's last grenade, when it blew up, it was not covering the default plant. Snail was able to plant there without taking any damage with a bunch of smoke around him and allowed hooked up to immediately fall back to ruins as soon as the post plant went down as Snail went on the rappel on the aqua balcony. Blue Bar and Sunrise Bar coming out as our final round of the half for UIUC's defense, trying to salvage a 4-2 scoreline. They definitely don't want to go down 4 or 5-1. to one. Be very unfortunate for them. Uh, the Captain was coming out again from the Mad King, but he's going to sit onto that Valkyrie. He's a, he's a fan of uh, 
sticking that sticking that captain or at least uh showing him uh, as he's you know he's been either Attackers six off or brought bombs. every round this defending path from you while you see but they have shown that they're not afraid to run him so anything is possible traffic once again on that zero with that hard breach charge Again, last round, really, a really poor decision making coming out from Harabic, trying to just repelling up on the wall to open it up with the hard breach charge. I really don't know what the, what the thought process going through there was when Snail still had three Selmas in his pocket and was on the roof. But Illinois State did manage to win the round, but with no help from Harabic there. Somewhat of a kitchen lateral hole coming out here from UIUC as they try to defend the blue bars and rice bar. So the Mazi of Flight Fiber is going to try to hold down inside the kitchen at least for a little while, try to delay some time. But you have Miami fans going for an early, early peak, but Fortress says no thank you. Immediately shuts that down. And about 10 seconds into the round, Miami Fitness is dead, as well as NK. He's going for another pick. Fortress with a 2k to start the round off. We're only 30, we're less than 30 seconds into the round. As the defense is on the site already, hooked up in the middle of the site. So many is taking a lot of damage now. It's a 5v, 5v2, 5 5v2 now. This hooked up does get that pick. It's 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 Illinois State all day and Fortra with a third now. All now up to the Mad King as he's on cool bars in a 1v5 and hooked up will finish it off. Lawless round coming out in about a minute long round for uh, Illinois State. Just a very quick execute. They just walked in through office as they had two players aggressively peeking that uh unnecessarily dying in the first 15 seconds. That was really Really poorly, uh, real, it was it was just real bad aggression from UIUC. They needed to adapt something to get momentum in their favor, but unfortunately that was just not the right call. So we will have the side swap come in now. Illinois State on the defense. You seeing a rook coming out. Patience, big fan of that 2x scope. Wants to be able to shoot click heads uh, as they want to finish this out in 7 to 1. But UIUC has a lot of ground to make up if they want to bring this to overtime. Attackers not saying they need to bring it to overtime bomb. just yet, but with Illinois State one round away from overtime, uh, UIUC is looking real desperate. But the sides have swaps. They do not bring some momentum into the favor of UIUC because they're now on the attack. Gonna bring the gridlock and the nomad. They definitely don't want anyone on their flank, so they're gonna use both an air jab and a track stand to try to cordon off some of the map. Pretty standard defense coming out here, besides that rook that I mentioned earlier from Illinois State. Also bringing that maestro, gonna use those camps. Is there a camp on that wall? Can't quite tell where those maestro camps have been placed down. Five seconds left. Placed down one of them, but it does look like. Attack the rook, is to locate a bomb rook of patience is going for a pick. Quick peek. He's waiting for someone to repel up that aqua balcony, I guess. But there is no one coming from that side as all of the attack has lined up on the east side of the map. All up to the roof except for Stormy Days. Looks like they're going to be going for a push through the penthouse theater. Fortra is the opening pick lost to the Mad King. As Patience also is now down by the gridlock, and it's a second kill now for UIUC. So, again, 30 seconds of the round, a lot of aggression coming out this game that's not necessarily needed, but we're 45 seconds into the round, and it's already a 5v3 for UIUC. Some very free kills coming out for them. As now the quad wall will be opened up by the ace of Fight Fiber. Bomb located by attackers. One more Selma coming out. He has one more left in the pocket to try to decide what he'll do with. Bubble spotted out by the, the attack. So now the defense is sitting in a very poor spot. Snail getting very aggressive, losing the fight to Stormy Days now. 2v5 in favor of the defense. Maestro of hooked up is going to do about 25 HP on to Stormy Days, but it's not a kill that they are needing. And Gridlock sitting on the window. He's going to get a lot of spam and the kill on to hooked up. Now a 1v5 for her rabbit. The server's lagging just a little bit there. Rabbit down the 1v5, needs to save his team the round. Does look like this round is basically all but over for UIUC. There's a Jaeger trapped on the pool vibe stairs now. Hits the air job, gets swung by Stormy Days. It's a flawless round coming out from UIUC. 
very good way to start their attack map. It's not going they needed to get the momentum rolling in their favor. A uh, lot of unnecessary peaking coming out from Illinois State. They need to respect their competition just a little bit more than they are currently. Uh, but UIUC bringing the momentum in their favor to start their attack. It's going to be exactly what they need to get through this half. Same team comp, it appears, going to come out from UIUC. They're liking the Nomad and the Gridlock. It allows them to cut off their flanks more. Uh, Patient's still going to stick on that Rook. They're going to go the... We're going to go back to the exact same bomb site with the exact same team comps. Uh, Illinois State seeing something that they need to fix. They're noting it down. They're going to try to adapt to see what... How their, uh, their adaptations are going to hold up against UIUC. Attackers need to I think that round there could be solved really easily by Illinois State. Just not giving two early picks in the first 30 seconds to UIUC. Basically a repeat of what happened in round number six, happened in round number seven, just on the other foot. So, Illinois State needs to take a note out of UIUC's book and how to just sit back a little bit. But some impact pulls coming out here now. One... Both of them actually doing. I can't quite tell if it's a, is that an impact hole or is that a shotgun hole? I can't quite tell. Uh, but you do have a hole in that. That has to be a shotgun hole because Fortress still has one impact in his pocket. That's actually going to use one of them to try to hold down the, the office door. He still tries to put it from office. Some more late setup coming out here from ISU as we are going to try to see the attack now get into the round. Stormy and Quite pushing in from the spawn over on the blue side with the rest of their team coming up from the Master Penthouse side. Looks like it's going to be a Penthouse push once again for UIUC. Mad King coming over to that Skylight looking to see if he can get a free pick like last round. However, Illinois State not giving that early pick this time like they were last round. Jaeger though of... Karavik is sitting top main, has been droned out. He's going to drop down to lobby, just trying to get away and stay alive for a little bit longer. Rome now coming good. There's not a whole lot of extra Rome coming out from the defense. It's just Karavik on the outside of the site while the rest of the players of Illinois State are sitting on site. And it's Wamai sitting on a reinforced hatch with a shield protected by ADSs and some magnets. So he wants to stay in here as long as possible. He's going to be playing here until he dies. Or until he gets a couple picks, whichever comes first. It's almost now coming out on to quad wall. As Jaeger's currently playing below in kitchen. And NK pushing up through luggage. I think gotten it clear that it's all clear through luggage. Trying to peek into Aqua, seeing what he can see. But no drones ahead of him. I don't believe they're aware that this Mai is here. They are now. NK is going to... Get off that angle as he is a little scared of Fortra. Fortra's actually swinging this a little. Really unnecessary. I, honestly, I'm not quite sure what to say there because NK had it, was just holding an angle. Snail trying to run up behind the aqua bar. Just gets absolutely domed by NK. And then, it, and then NK swings as well. And now all of a sudden, we're in a 2v5. This man, Miami, thing gets a pick onto Horavik. Looking very poor coming out from Illinois State on this defense. Hooked up does get one of the Stormy to bring back into a 2v4. But Patience has a lot of work to do. If there's a player coming in from Aqua gets NK. That's your Gridlock off the board. Gridlock not looking towards the Hookah Bar. The Mad King though on 20 HP is going to try to walk into Aqua. Miami Fins get the swinging. Hooked up now a 1v3 for Patience. With 30 seconds left, can he hold out? Completely unaware that an attack is pushed in through. Oh man, the attack pushed in through Aqua. But Patience and Miami Fins are going to trade out the last two kills of the round. And, Matt, and the Mad King you see on this kill cam is going to spam to the wall to no avail as the Rook is already dead. UIUC takes another round. We're now up 2 5 3. And Illinois State most likely going to head to a different bomb site. Something not working for them that they will. They'll be going down to the kitchen site this time. Obviously. Hookah Billiards not working in their favor. Let's see. Illinois State playing a little bit sloppy on their defense so far this half. Uh, just some really, like, really unfortunate, like, just, like, acts of aggression from them are getting them picked off early. And it's leading to an all-out brawl with the attackers winning it every single time. 
Fortra off the Mozzie onto the Bandit. But we are going to see that Cap can't stuck from Patience and the Snail coming out on that Warden. Attackers need to Brings that shield and that Valk. With the, I believe he has the 1.5 scope on that MPX. So, we will see how they decide to hold the site. Drone comes in from Miami Fins, just in the middle site, and gets shot. A very poor drone usage there from UIUC. Try not to get, try not to get those drone shots. It's really, you, you need to hold your economy if you drone economy pretty attack. well. Bandit coming out to protect that service wall there. They don't want to get that opened up too early. Allow them to play inside the service still. Fortra doing the exact same bandits that Miami Fence was doing here earlier on in the game. Five seconds remaining. No notable hold above coming out from ISU, but it looks like Karavik will play up here uh, anyways, as well as Patience perhaps after pushing through the, uh, putting on his cap can trap brother, he still has one more left in his pocket, but there's a four stack of attackers currently sitting outside, but they're going to go up to the roof, Sterminate sitting outside that kitchen window. Has eyes in sight, but I don't believe Illinois State is aware of this. They are not, in fact, aware. Snail just trying to swing that, to swing that window. Stormy Days moving away from the kitchen window, pushing it over towards the service door. So we now see Patience sitting up in the VIP hallway. Now she's a drone that came in from the roof. Uh, Miami fans now out of drones, actually. So, not a whole lot of clearing coming out on this top floor, but we do see a drone coming in behind the defender of Haravik. That's going to be calling out his every location. Now it falls back. Haravik knows he's been droned out. Looks Tries to look for that drone. Can't exactly find it. So, he's just going to fall back in, further into theater a little bit. He hears that drone. You can see it. But, one more drone off the board. About five drones left now for UIUC. We're almost halfway through the round now, so they're making good time, but... The Mad King is going to open it up on the Patience. It's your captain that was sitting in VIP. No longer there. Looks like he just walked down the hallway and shot Patience as he was looking the other way. But Mad King is now down about 25 HP. He's looking for this Jaeger. But Haravik gets the shot off first. The Mad King not looking down at the ground. Haravik playing like a worm sitting inside a theater. It's a trade back. Minute 15 left. Zofia of Miami Fins now spraying through that theater wall she's pushed in to vip hallway with her teammates of sorry three attackers up on this uh, two attackers now up on the second floor as they might try to open up some of the floor but i can't really tell they're not really going for any vertical pressure but the defect the attack is now pushed in through lobby they have lobby control is this jaeger of heretic is still sitting up on top floor but there's no one pushing it. looks like it's gonna be like a, perhaps a kitchen uh execute coming out here for me while you see as they wrap around the cool vibe stairs but they're going to deal with fortra on this bandit fortra getting the pick on the quite five nature ace off the board now man advantage in the favor of illinois state you have stormy on the cool vibe stairs waiting for that cross back as well as nk currently sitting inside the lobby pushing into the bathroom they're just gonna try to walk into sight it looks like Without really any clear, but 15 seconds left, there's not much they can do. Stormy does get a pick on the Fortra. Cannot get the second on the Snail. Snail down, though. Miami gets the second one. Now, hooked up on the third. 2v2 now, plant going down. We're at 0-0. Zero, zero. Stormy Days gets the Han solo kill on the hookup. It's now all up to for Rabbit. He's running around to a lobby. They're completely aware of this. But the airdrop gets caught, and Miami Fins will kill Rabbit on his re-entry into the building. UIUC with the last 15 second execute will make the round work in their favor. They've now taken three in a row. We're up to 5-4 now. It's just a very attacker sided uh, coastline, which you normally would expect. Overall, you know, Illinois State held that pretty well throughout the round, but the last second collapsed onto site from UIUC was just too much for them to deal with. Too many angles being opened up laterally by UIUC. With Haravik nowhere to be found, still sitting upstairs, not falling back to sight in the last 30 or so seconds after getting his pick. It allowed the attack to get to maintain their lobby control and work on a kitchen execute. 
We're gonna be going back Attackers to kitchen though. To Illinois State hoping they can, can figure out what went wrong that round and try to fix it up. We are gonna see a lesion now coming out from hooked up. Uh, but we will soon see that snail on the ward. UYUC rocking the same attacking lineup as they have been for the for basically their entire uh, attack half. They do like that. I do think the the Gridlock and the Nomad perhaps might be a little overkill. I don't necessarily think we need both of them, but they do Attackers like it. Uh, so they are opting to bring uh, the Gridlock as well. Um, you know, personally, I would like to see you know maybe uh, another flex pick. Maybe a, I I personally like to see a sledge. They have a real lack of soft destruction the on their board. Yes, you have your Ash and your Zofia, and your, your Zofia has some breach charges, and you have a secondary shotgun on NK. But in terms of real vertical destruction, you're not you're not really seeing a whole lot. Portra was going to try to C4 up through the hookah, up, like up underneath the quick door, but falls off of that due to the barricade being opened up by, is it the, is it the ace of Quiet Fiber? Yes, it is. So, Quiet Fiber opens up that, that mudroom door. Fortune now just holding that angle, trying to dare anyone to peek him on it. But, there is no one currently sitting over there. Snail crawling on the ground, trying to get a peek through the kitchen window. Does appear the Nomad of Stormy Days is not going to give him anything. So, Snail is going to crawl back away. The attack now making their way upstairs trying to get a little bit of that clock through bone quite fiber sitting outside on that vip balcony but there's actually no one up here there is you have your jaeger erratic sitting in vip he's gonna fall back or not i'm sorry uh no, billiard's falling back to aqua but there's no one currently above the bomb site perfect's all alone the ash of the mad king is just gonna hop in to luggage and Paravik's there waiting to greet him. Now, the attack has opened up the VIP wall to Billiards. Quite Fiber using his Selma uh, on the soft wall just to try to get some line of sight. But they haven't really done anything to clear him out. He's still just sitting up here. And he's going to move around. And he spots, <laughs> he spots the ace of Quite Fiber. Takes a little bit of damage off him. But it's still not going to fall down completely. This attack needs to do something to get this Jaeger out of here. As he's going to create like a deadly situation between them. He's going to waste a lot of time and get, perhaps get a kill. Though NK does get hooked up. That's your that's your lesion inside the service now dead. And Patience getting the trade onto NK though. Stormy Day taking a lot of damage from this Jaeger. Up a rabbit. Taking a lot of damage now at about 1 HP. Going through some shots to the wall. Patience, or Harabic still on full HP though. However, as I say that, Quite Fiber will trade him out. 3v3 for the two teams, but <laughs> once again, timing strikes and Stormy Days is now a down as the Bandit of Fortress is going to fall back down Cool Vibe stairs. Smoke comes out to try to block the line of sight as the revive comes off, but we're down to 30 seconds and a 3v3. And now your highest HP player of Miami Fins on UIC is now dead. Both attackers now below 50. And Stormy Days, what was left of him anyways, finished off by Fortress. Now a 1v3 for Quiet Fibers. He tries to push down to the Cool Vibe stairs. Fortress sitting on the bottom, waiting for Quiet Fiber to come down. He'll pick up the kill. Illinois State finally gets around in their favor as we head to match point on map one. Took a long time for Illinois State to finally get around on their defense. But UIUC, not going to stop here. They're gonna bring it. They're gonna try to bring it to overtime at least. So they want this map under their belt. Snail coming out on that warden once again. He likes that shield. He likes that 1.5. Looks like we'll be seeing a second shield that's hooked up. Is gonna bring the Ella perhaps. So two bulletproof gadgets this time around, uh, as well as the Jaeger's ADS is protecting them. Fortra is gonna do his best Miami Finns impression. Gonna band it off that quad wall once again. You've seen a lot of bandit this game. Very interesting. Uh, not something you, not something you normally don't see on coastline, but Attackers I do believe it is a little bit more of a obscure coastline pick. Um, but with the ace on the board, I think it's very needed as those summons are very potent in open up these walls, especially this quad wall here that we see hooked up and Fortra reinforcing. So having those bandit batteries on this wall is kind of helpful. It does allow. Uh, it's a lot of fortress to deny some of that wall opening. 
Uh, so we will see that come out of him. We did see the Ella be stuck. The Vi hooked up. He's bringing that shield. As well as Snail. So you're going to have two shields. No. It looks like it will perhaps be a player sitting on the Opera Hatch. Reinforced with the shield once again. Is that a C4 being used for a rotate? I believe it was. I believe Fortre used to see C4 for a rotate. They don't have any shotguns. So they were going to go. They went ahead and used one. Well, that rotation hole there. But they actually don't have one on top pool vibes. That could come back to bite them later in the round, but I think Payton just already used, oh no, he's got a pre-place on the hatch, waiting for someone to come open it. Secondary shotgun coming out from NK. Patience gets, goes for a C4 that makes it out with his life, surprisingly. Falls back now to VIP. As he has been droned out by Stormy Days, I think he's unaware, but the drone does get shot out. Stormy Days sitting outside the VIP window, spans a few bullets through it, tries to see if he can find anything, but no avail coming out now. First Selma coming out. I think it actually gets destroyed by the bandit. By the wall. I don't I'm not exactly sure what, what what happened there. But I do believe that first Selma did get destroyed by the electrified wall. Two players sitting inside of VIP. Very aggressive hold coming out from Illinois State as you have Snail and Patience sitting inside of here. But the attack will open up that wall and from the roof. Mad King gets patience and Quite Fiber will pick off Snail. So your two VIP players are dead. But Heravic flanks in through 90, goes into theater, picks off Quite Fiber. This your Come ace on. off the board. On the One kill back in the favor of Illinois State. Over it. They still are down Bob the man. By attackers. Miami Fins trying to see if someone's going to push through theater. Doesn't want to get flanked even more. Going to spam through the wall. We'll find nothing though. So the second shot actually going inside of. VIP, but it didn't really do anything. Looks like your Ash of the Mad King is going to go up the staircase uh, onto Hookah Balcony. And Ella rooting their shield to top cool vibes, waiting for a push to come around from the base swing. Here's Smoke. Very interesting repel from NK. He's going to try to wait for someone to flank. He's just going to sit on this repel, hoping someone comes through his crosshairs. But the Jaeger... Uh, but Ravik still sitting strong at theater. Here's that window gets open. He knows there's someone on that rappel or at least watching that angle. So he's no longer going to rotate back through luggage. So he's just going to sit here and wait outside of theater. And he's wasting a lot of time here. As UIUC knows he's over here but is not dedicating the resources to go actively aggress and clear him out. So instead they're going to just try to push the site directly. Because they know it's a 1v2 uh, on site. Rabbit taking a lot of damage on the flank as they shoot through luggage. Hooked up though, getting the kill on to Stormy Days. Rabbit now down, NK can't get, quite get the finishing kill. And it's now a 2v3 with 15 seconds. Fortress gonna have to hold inside the blue bar while hooked up. Is desperately trying to hold on top of base, but Miami Fins will vault the shield, get the kill out of him. Going for the plant now, Fortra in a very bad spot, but does get the Ash of Mad King, and all he has to do is stop this plant. And he doesn't stop the plant, but he gets the 1v1, and it's all up, all up to NK as Fortra needs to defuse this bomb. Fortra gonna try to go for the 1v1 engagement, gets a few shots off to NK, about 25 HP. He's gonna continue the swing, and Fortra will win the 1v1. Good post-plant positioning from him. Even though he was unable to stop the plant, he will get the 1v2 to finish it off. That's a 1v3 clutch. For Fortra and Illinois State will Bob win map number failed. one. Defenders Score win. of seven to four. Great play coming up from Fortra to end the match. And just like that, Illinois State will be going into Oregon with an advantage. UIUC fighting hard on their attack app, almost winning that round, bringing us to the to seven five or bringing us to six five there, but just unfortunately not enough to keep themselves in the game. We'll be heading to map two right after this.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Face It Collegiate Championship League. I'm your host, Jagged. We just got done with map number one on Coastline. Illinois State winning that in a score of 7-4. to four. We'll be heading to Oregon soon. We'll be waiting on our teams to ready up. But 7-4 scoreline on Coastline. Illinois Urbana Champagne coming back on their attack with three in a row. They were playing that attack pretty well as Illinois State was just kind of swinging on their defensive half and giving away a lot of free picks that they shouldn't have really been giving. Uh, so a lot of sloppy play coming out from Illinois State, allowing UIUC to come back uh, into the match. But those last two rounds, all Illinois State and our players now are ready. So we are going to be heading into map number two, Oregon. Illinois State starting on the defense. We will see how this map goes. Illinois State up one map. UIUC needs this map in order to stay in the game. They'll be going to their map pick, of course. So you would hope they have something planned out here to counter Illinois State's play. But Illinois State, not one to throw too hard. But... We'll see how these bands go down now. Illinois State bang off the ace. So, no ace this map. Expect to see most likely a Thatcher ban. Perhaps a Maverick ban. I've seen a Maverick ban come out on this map too. Uh, leaving a Thatcher on the board. Uh, opting to do that uh, instead of banning him out. So, it'll be interesting to see how this ban phase goes. One hard breacher already off the board, and our last attack to do will actually be Jackal. So both Thatcher and Maverick staying on the board. UIUC, once again, not liking that roam pressure. So they're going to get rid of that Jackal. No more feet scans coming out from the Spanish Operator. We're seeing what our first defensive ban is. Normally on this map, you see something like maybe a Mira, maybe a Maestro. Malusi a lot of times, too, as pushing basement with the Malusi up is very infuriating. The Valk ban coming out, too, now. Uh, Valk, very powerful operator, especially with the recent meta change. She's been seeing her ban rate go up quite a lot, as you no longer need to ban out well, my, uh or, you know, not often as a Jaeger. Um, but those, those uh, indestructible gadgets no longer being as protected with that jaeger my combo due to the recent season change. And Malusi, once again, coming out from Illinois State. Like I mentioned earlier, trying to push, especially pushing that basement bomb site with those banshees up is a real pain. And honestly, it just feels a lot better not having to deal with her. Uh, so you have your ace and your Valk ban this round of this map instead of a Blackbeard and a Mira ban. But we'll see that Jackal and Malusi common themes coming out through this map as our teams don't like those operators. Comfort bans coming out from them. But we'll see going up to the Top floor first, the dorm and main hall bomb site. We'll be seeing an Echo come out for the first time. Scratch that off the board. He's been six picked. Uh, be interesting to see what comes out from him first. But IQ on NK, uh, opting to go for a more selfish operator. But Snail six off to that cave, needing some sort of wall denial on that top floor. IQ will be helpful in getting those electric claws off. And but many in the overall, uh, when it comes down to everything else, he should IQ's utility is really selfish, doesn't really help out our team a lot. Especially since IQ doesn't have any sort of throwable uh, to get past those ADS. Since those ADS is now recharged, if your attack squad is not ready to clear out some utility, really the only bullet gadget, once again, is that shield from hooked up. Uh, teams here not really going for a whole lot of indestructible, or not indestructible gadgets, unlike uh, Ali, but no, not a whole lot of bulletproof gadgets coming out. You only have a shield. Uh, I think we've seen them run Maestro one round last map on Coastline. I think it was the first round, if I remember right. Uh, but, yeah, so there's not a whole lot of gadget play coming out from ISU. They're preferring to play this more on a frag roll. But we will have that Mozzie coming out for some drum denial. Uh, and Snail is going to be running that TCSG. What's, what's his, what skin is he running? He's running that White Dragon, now available in stores. Uh, those Blood Orchid skins that... Oh, it's not actually from White Dragon. But still, that Lunar New Year sale, uh, you can get White Dragon and Red Silk coming out. Coming back from the grave uh, after about two years not, uh, not being in the store. One of those old seasonal skins everyone loves. Uh, so those, yeah, so Lunar New Year sale. New Year sale. Go, go check it out. 
the attack trying to get ready for a master push white fiber just holding an angle prone into trophy seeing if there's anyone's gonna peek him but there's actually no one holding that and there's no pressure really on the main stairs on armor you do have your jaeger and your mozzie sitting below in basement right now and your ash uh, the mad king pushed in from garage but your jaeger and your mozzie waiting for the assault to come in so they can flank uh not sure how i feel about that i do believe they could do a better job on the first floor it does look like the jaeger of hooked up or the jaeger of Harabic rather is getting ready to push up through zig drone comes out spots him there and Harabic will get that and fall back into the basement with the mazia fortra so we'll see the attack know that there's at least one off site in perhaps in the basement habana pellets coming out to to the attic wall there's actually no one there to stop it so that wall will be open hooked up rotates that shield as Harabic flanks into attic but there's no one there they said they haven't gone for an attic push at all he's about to meet up with ash of the mad king and that's a trade back after quite fiber gets the kill on to hooked up so your smoke's dead and your ash is dead a lot of late round denial and a lot of explosive power gone off the board i'd say it's a pretty even trade if you're both teams it's a really unfortunate to lose your smoke but i think it does it perhaps may hurt them a little bit more to lose their ash hooked up now taking a little bit of damage i believe from that window repel coming out from Stormy as he rotates now. Sitting on that far back angle, trying to hold that attic door as we get ready for perhaps a side execute with the last 40 seconds, though. Zofia is still sitting inside of Armory, but White Fiber will get a second pick on the Snail. That's your Cade off the board. And now a man advantage in the favor of UIUC. It's Mazia Fortress still waiting below for the default plant, but NK down now as Horavik does get a pick on the flank. Is your IQ off the board? Now, push in from the site, coming out from UIUC. As Miami needs to pull this goo out before he can plant. Ten seconds left. But Harabic top right Five now, waiting left. for the fight to come out. C4 needs to come out from the from Fortra, but it misses. And Miami's actually going to get the plant down. It's all up to him in a 1v2. Stormy Days and Miami holding this trophy door. But we need to be, but Fortra needs to be careful because that wall hasn't been open. The attack just simply pushed in from the doorway. Now Miami is just holding an angle on the trophy door. Gonna see the Mozzie not landing all the shots, but Fortune doesn't land a single one now. At about 25 HP, one or two bullets left from Miami will get him, and Miami will finish off what was left of Fortra. UIUC winning round one on their attack of Oregon. Kind of just a, a bull push through. The trophy door uh they just walked into sight without hardly any contestion as the defenders were all sitting either really far back or two of them off site uh and unfortunately for fortune that c4 didn't hit the default planner uh i'm not exactly sure where that hit but it was off its mark and miami fence was able to get the plant down because of that clash coming out from snail perhaps if it doesn't get six picked off but they will have no wall denial if that is the case snail sixing off of that Onto the warden, so still no wall denial coming out from uh from Illinois State, but Snail bringing that shield with that 1.5, hoping to get a little bit more aggressive. But I don't necessarily think aggression is what Illinois State needs right now. I think they need a little bit more structure in their play on the bomb site uh, because they're leaving it wide open for anyone to just walk in. That's exactly what UIUC is recognizing. That's what they've been just they, what they decided to do. They just walk in and take what they want. Since there's no one there to say, oh no, you can't do that. They say, oh, yes, we can. So, some form of adaptation coming up from Illinois State. Not sure if it's the right form of adaptation, but time will tell if that is true. Stormy Days coming out with a drone. Just inside, underneath that couch. Underneath that table, rather. Ten seconds to insert. Just to try to see what's going on inside of games. But, Five seconds if they're not careful, Quite Fiber will just be able to open this wall for free. Uh, unless Horavik has anything to Attackers say about that on his peak. But he's going to go down to the basement it. again. Starting in the basement, I'm not really sure it's the play when you're doing a master hold. Because no one's really going to go like try to push you out of the basement. And you're going to have to spend time coming back up and trying to figure out where they're flanking from. But it does look like Quite Fiber and the gang will perhaps be going for an attic take this time around. Snail taking a lot of early damage. I believe he got shot by the shotgun of hooked up. That's about 35 30 to 35 hp off a of snail early in the round 
really unlucky for Illinois State. UIUC now throwing out this big tower, making sure there's no one hiding in a little corner. And it looks like we do have a defender in the building, the Thatcher of NK. Just in case there's any wall denial this round, they are gonna they are gonna use that EMP. But unfortunately, about 50 to 60 damage coming out from NK onto Miami Finn. So a lot of team damage coming out this round. Uh, just like really unfortunate yeah, coordination from both teams. Uh, just not playing together well. Mad King taking a lot of early, like taking some damage as he gets an engagement with, I believe, Haravik. Uh, so Haravik falls down to the basement. Haravik taking about 55, 60 HP, but Mad King taking about 40 to 45. So, you know, roughly an even trade there. You have two defenders on each, or you have two players on each team that are pretty hurt. Patience takes a lot of HP damage. Uh, I'm not really sure from what. Because there are no nades on the side of my of uh, UIUC, so I really don't know what that came from. Unless he got shot through uh, the window as he tried to cross. That's the only thing I can assume would happen. Just look at that was probably the case. Is NK is really holding a tight angle through this window. He's waiting for someone to peek him. So I believe NK probably shot him for about 70% uh, of his HP. But the wall has been opened, but interestingly enough, the attack has completely fallen off of it, except for NK as he now sits inside a big tower alone, has to claim more off his flank. But Haravik is looking to go up and spoil his party late in the round. As NK pushes his way up through attic, waiting for someone to swing him, but that's not going to be the case as, he, as Smoke uh, picked up and is just sitting there. And now the Habana of Quite Fiber is not out of Xkyro, so that Master Well still will not be open. Instead, the, the, the Thatcher of NK pushed all the way up, but doesn't see the smoke and hooked up actually gets the kill. And Haravik is one onto Mad King, so the flank working out well. 5v3 now for you or for ISU. UIUC in a very poor spot with no more hard breach. They can only walk in through this door. They don't have the time to flank. Stormy Days pops into the window, but it's being traded up by patience. Now 5v2. And it's looking like an ISU round the entire time. Miami has the bomb, but he's like sitting at main stairs waiting for someone to flank him. Put up gets another one. And Snail with the final kill. Flawless round coming out from Illinois State. That team damage early in the round not affecting Snail at all. As he goes for the swing with the back turned. Sylvia having that back turned rather. Looking at that breach, trying to find hooked up. And the pinch will come out. Illinois State wins the round. Even this up at one apiece. Heading down to the basement now. The mirror coming out from Snail. This mirror window is going to be very oppressive when it comes to this basement site. Rook on Patience. I couldn't tell if that was a random pick or if that was a uh, purposeful pick. But we'll see the Goyo come out. Rook being sixed off to perhaps a Mute or a Smoke perhaps. Maybe a Cade. Some form of Wall Denial or Holding Power. But Sophia will go on to the Thatcher. Patience We'll get six onto that bandit. Uh, nice six picks coming out uh, from each team. They kind of counteract Defenders each other. Protect your bombs from being good eye, good thinking on Miami Finns. And to go for that Thatcher just in case they six to a wall denial. We'll be seeing those Goyo shields come up. One killer trying to hold the line of sight through the e box with some blue. Uh, it does look like there is actually not going to be any blue shield. So there are not. There's just going to be a mirror window here too, I guess. Uh, so, really interesting attackers. strategy here from Illinois State. Uh, they put a mirror window and perhaps a, perhaps a mirror window, but for sure a Goyo shield inside a pillar. Can't quite tell if that's going to be the final plan. Left. Maybe it won't be. Perhaps there will be one on Freezer and the Closet, Five but still have to place down any windows. Last Goyo shield going down attackers are moving somewhere. It the will go down. Attackers have dropped the bomb this time. It'll go down here inside a laundry looking towards. I can't quite tell where it's. I don't think Fortune exactly knows where he wants to put it yet, but he's gonna put it down by the rotate looking towards this entry area into the laundry room. Second mirror window, there it goes. Second mirror window will go, in fact, go on e box wall, and we will see the fence hold down blue in that form. The mirror window and the glue shield in the hall, but a drone has made it all the way into pillar uncontested, but will immediately get shot by a snail. So, they, uh, while they did get that information initially that it was clear, it is no longer clear as Snail is now holding down Pillar while the Bandit of Patience plays in E-Box on that mirror window. Attack otherwise going in for the clear. The IQ of NK pushes through Dining, but an early pick comes out onto Horavik. I'm not sure where that kill was, 
but Snail gets one. The Snail and Miami fans trade. And look like it's just like a push down the main, down the back stairs, perhaps. What? Oh, Jaeger, Jaeger of Heretic was in garage picking out through that door. But now the snail. No. Wow, what a shot from Stormy Days. That's hooked up, goes for the flank, but gets down in the process. But does manage to pick off hooked up. Now a four v two in the favor of the, the defense, and C four is coming out in aggression from Patience and Fortra. But there are no more, no more C four denial from them. And nothing to show for it either. Now, as the attack wraps around the bomb site, trying to constrict it like a boa constrictor, the defense is in shambles as they try to figure out how attack to hold off this attack. As Quiet Fiber has rotated to the attack bottom of main stairs alongside the IQ of NK, and the rest of the attack is currently. Oh, sorry, it's not NK. Uh, Stormy Days working with them. Patience doing a lot of damage in them. Down on the Quiet Fiber, but let's get droned out. I would assume the Ash. Mad King and the IQ of NK are ready to push through Pillar. The Goyo, though, of Fortress trying to hold that door. That long angle pops the Goyo shield. IQ is just going to hold in the back. But Stormy Days is rotated around to the back. And now Quiet Fiber is alone in the front. Goyo hit, sees that air jab, gets hit by that air jab. Flung back. And now Patience dies to Mad King. All up to the Goyo of Fortress now in a 1v3. Sees the Ash, gets the kill onto the Ash. But the Thermite of. Fight Fiber has now pushed up. And there's now a cross. Fight Fiber will finish off what was left of Fortra. UIUC, round number three in the bag for them. Once again, Illinois State's aggression really proven against its worth. Uh, they losing a lot of picks too early. And UIUC is just capitalizing on the swinging coming out from Illinois State. They need to, they need to stop the, uh, the swinging if they want to win some rounds. Because the aggression coming out from Illinois State is just not working. UIUC just ready for it and willing to capitalize every corner that they can get. So we'll be going back to the basement again. Snail on now onto the Cade as Patience rotates onto the Mira. Hooked up, still on that Legion and Fortress still on that Goyo. Heretic still playing that Jaeger. So we will see a Cade instead of a Bandit. Uh, this time around, go for maybe that hatch, to uh, trying to get bomb. that hatch drop taken care of, so Stormy Days can't just drop in through D-Box like he did last time. So at least, at least Illinois State's trying to do some form of uh, adaptation, up the location of a bomb. but we'll, we'll see, we'll see if it is too little too late or not. UIUC, three rounds in, already gotten the expected amount for an attacker on Oregon, and they're poised to perhaps get some more rounds as well. They could go into the defensive half with at least three rounds if they're lucky. Uh, and that puts them in a really good spot to win this map out and bring us to map three. Now, all this is speculation, of course. We are only on round four. Illinois State still has the next three rounds to bring it up 4-2 to a, an even split. But with the way UIUC is playing as well as the way ISU is playing as well, I think it allows that opportunity for UIUC to get those round wins. Okay, the snail is going to hold down inside of E-Box. Drone coming out, spots out a lot of information, sees where the Goyo of Fortra and the Cade of Snail are playing. But you are going to have Miami Fins holding the bomb. I don't understand, but I don't quite understand why I don't give quite Fiber the bomb. I don't know why you don't get necessarily pass the bomb. She's is your more of an entry player. But speaking of entry, Parada gets the opening kill onto NK as he solo entries through Small Tower once again. That solo entry is not working out for him, uh, like last round. And Miami Fitz is already on the back cover stairs with bomb in hand, trying to push this Goyo of Fortra. If he dies here with bomb, that's a real shame. That's really unlucky. Like, it's just not a good place for that bomb to be. I do believe Miami Fitz needs to hand that bomb off before getting aggressive like this. Because he's just mag dumping into this pillar area, trying to engage with Fortra. Fortra will take about 25 HP as he crosses back over. Can't knock out the drone. <laughs> really unlucky for him. But Miami Finch is just gonna hold here and actually let it's actually gonna let the Goyo of Fortra cross back into the corner, but there's constant yellow pinks coming out by Stormy Days as he's continuing on the drone. Snail though, holding that angle onto the tower stairs, waiting for someone to swing deep. Fortra taking some more damage though. 
from Miami Fins, and they've got they've, they've essentially got Fortress trapped in here, but he will make it back to the corner. Miami Fins and the Ash of Mad King still sit on this back tower stairs. Snail gets Stormy Day, that's your Nomad and your Blue Pressure off the board. You gotta wonder, does this look like quite Fiber alone over on the freezer side? You're gonna open the hatch and push down the stairs at the same time while your Ash pushes in the meeting, trying to make sure there's no one flanking. But all four members. Are all five members? Oh no, Horavik is actually currently on the first floor. He might actually catch the Ash here, but Mad King will get the back of Horavik and Miami Fins will get Fortress. We're not down to a 3v3. Snail that's got Miami Fins, but the rest of the push is coming down now from the freezer side. Hooked up, does get the third might of five fighters now. All up to Mad King in a 1v3 with 30 seconds left to go. He's a lot to push through. Opening up more angles for himself. But it looks like hooked up now. Thrown behind that box. Nice now out of utility. Pops that Goya shield. But he's going to walk into the crossfire of three different players. To go. Tries to push up. Ten seconds to go. Mad King gets one, but Snail will get the final kill in the dying seconds of the round. Illinois State finally win the second round. They will take basement and most likely head back up top. UIUC doing somewhat of a clear. Uh, I don't like how their their IQ. So I've got a couple things to say about the IQ. One, I don't think the IQ is a good pick for this map. I think it is a waste of a pick and a waste of utility. Two, your IQ is solo pushing in with no with no backup, no drones, and she's getting herself killed early on in the round. It's putting you down a man extremely early. So I don't know. Maybe put two and two together and. Six off the IQ. There it is. Onto the Thatcher. Two hard creatures now. Now we're talking. Maybe your Thatcher won't push in by themselves. Snail six off the Cade. Do you have the mute for Walden Isle still? Cade onto the Cade. We'll stick that Cade actually. Uh, so we will have both Cade and mute Attackers coming out from ISU. Good adaptations from both teams. Like I was saying, the IQ is just simply not working out. And Cade not working out on that entry. He needs to work with the rest of his team to try to get the walls open. Both rounds upstairs so far. Uh, UIUC has failed to get this master wall open. It said the first round, they only got the uh, part of the attic wall there open. Second round, they managed to get both sides of attic open. Uh, third time around, we'll have to see what is waiting for us. If they get attic and master open, or if they only get one of them open. But they are running the thermite and the Havana. No math for the attic wall. They are instead just going to go for that thatcher. Probably most likely a, a Havana on the attic wall Attackers so objective is to locate a we'll be seeing the nomad coming out as well on the flank just like normal uh i think this is a lot stronger of a team lineup from the attacking side of uiuc uh but it doesn't look like anyone spawned on the tower side everyone's spawning on the main street side and looks like one of them most like a, i believe uh looks like the zofia yes the zofia spawned on the west side of the map we get ready for a master push. EMP comes out really early, but it does look like the cave. Oh man, the cave of Snail comes out, and that's a lot of X Kairos now off the board. As ten of uh, like ten or twelve of them now are gone in the instant. As there is no second EMP coming out from NK. Really poor utility management as the second EMP comes out now. But uh, once again, Snail's just gonna cave trick these. They're also, all your ex Kairos gone. NK, I don't think NK knows how to use Thatcher here. Because NK now blind by a, by a teammate's flash grenade. Doesn't know how to use EMPs and for EMP into EMP those cave tricks away. So all down left to all the hard reach now left up to the Thermite of Mad King. And he is nowhere to be found. He's currently still outside the map. He needs to make his way into Master Bedroom. But the cave of NK is now pushed into coat. He's inside a site, but the defense has no idea. The Legion spots him out, but I do believe the Cade of Snail is going to try to swing him out. But Havana, dead now, by Fortra, and Patience is going to get NK. Really, like, dumb aggression coming out from UIUC. I don't know how to put it any other way except just, like, not thorough clearing. And just really, inter really like, interesting aggression coming out from both teams. Uh, poor utility management, and just overall some really, like, dumb aggression. Trade's coming out now. With a down coming out onto Fortra. Horatic sitting below the default plant. Tries to spam through, but hits a beam. And the Thermite of Mad King manages to make it away with his life. 
Bartra still down to a technical 2v2. Both defenders are off site. Attackers are activating the diffuser. So, not exactly sure what. All right, Magnum does get a kill on what was left of Bartra, and now all of a sudden it's all up to patience in a one in a 2v1. What should have been a round for ISU has now completely 180, and is all left up to patience in the post plant. He has to walk in through trophy door. But has players watching his move. Patience not going for the default plant player. I don't think he's aware that he's there, but it's gonna swing, get them down, finalizes the kill. But the last player is off site, pushing up white now, as Stormy gets the final two kills. UIUC gets the third round of their attack. Honestly, this play coming out from Illinois State's extremely sloppy. I don't know how to put it any other way besides it's just plain bad. That should have been a round they won through and through. They were at 5-3 with the Thatcher and the Habana dead. The Master Wall was still closed. And instead, they go for the aggressive plays. And it gets and it fire, backfires in their face and allows UIUC to bring it back and win out the round in a post plant. I don't know. If you're Illinois State, you have to be kicking yourselves because you're just throwing away rounds. And UIUC, they've got to be feeling good now because they've already gotten three rounds in their attack half. All they need to do now is just coast into their defense, and they're looking real good. So, for the fourth time this half, we'll be heading back to kids' dorms. Pulse coming out on the six pick for Attackers Fortra. Need to locate and Gonna try to see for that planner from below, I guess. Um, and then Goyo coming out for Snail. There's some area denial and a few more shields. But they're not bringing that smoke for, for plant denial. They do have three C4s and two impacts, though, um, for that denial. But they have to, I, honestly, there's, once again, I mean, you're bringing, you're bringing new for the wall denial, but you're not bringing a Thatcher. NK instead often go on to the Mav this time. Uh, not, not being able to make that Thatcher work. I do believe some utility w was just destroyed there. This might have been really unfortunate. My, no, no meat jammer. Perhaps a, perhaps a goo mine. Um, maybe, no. Okay, so perhaps it was a goo mine that got destroyed there. Um, but I thought I heard I heard thought I heard an explosive break Attackers there. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and so, defuse it. So as we enter the last round of our attack, we do have all three available hard breachers on the board. No Thatcher, NK, very uh very poor Thatcher player. So he's gonna go into the Maverick instead. Looks like he may try to get attic wall open, perhaps. Um, with that Mav, he's gonna repel up. But the Jaeger of Haravik is currently sitting inside a lobby, waiting for a player to perhaps push into classroom. But I don't think anyone is going to give him that satisfaction just yet he's just, he's going to play, play around in the lobby just play it in the garage there's actually a player outside the nomad of stormy is going to open up the attic window or the attic window sorry the armory window and heravik's just ratting around inside of that garage not really doing anything but he's not died yet either he hasn't gotten a kill uh they're, they're now stormy is repelling into armory and Jaeger of Haravik is still alone in Garage, and they're going to actually air jab off the flank. So, Haravik's going to either shoot that air jab off or hit it full on as he sprints up the main stairs. But, there's a Mute Jammer stopping this Thermite charge that the Mad King has brought on that main wall. But your Maverick is across the map inside the attic. Looks like your, your, mute, of, your mute of hooked up is just going to push up and kill him. No team play coming out from UIUC. It allows NK to, get to, to die really early. Uh, without doing a whole lot of work, a bunch of nades off the board and like a lot of wall destruction off the board. But Haravik's managed to push his way up into armory now. As the, as the attack needs to pop below and get rid of that mute jammer that's stopping uh, them from reminding open that wall. Miami Finn's sitting outside the big window trying to hold an angle. Snail playing tight on that bomb chassis, but Miami's actually going to rotate around to master, it looks like. Prep C4 perhaps coming out. From Fortra, uh, is yeah, the case. A breach charge used on a, the classroom window. Stay back. Stay Miami needs to get that mute jammer off the wall, but I don't think he's aware of where exactly that is. And he pops on the wrong side of the wall, so you have to use that second impact. There it goes. Quite Fiber takes a lot of damage from the Jaeger of Arabic inside of Armory, and he's just going to persist in there for now. But the wall does get opened. Arabic trying to peek onto the main stairs, waiting for someone to push up. Quiet Fiber does. It's off Arabic. 4v4 now, but Quiet Fiber's at about 20 HP. Mad King takes about 25% of his HP from Hooked Up inside an attic, as Hooked Up does cross over. Mad King pushing now into sight. He's going to go for a default plant. 
Pulse effect opened up. Patience gets a pick. And Stormy Days and Patience both trade him back. But Mad King's gonna get the plant off too. He dies as soon as the plant goes off, but it's all up to Miami now. And 1v2, he's been down. Patience with a knife to finish it off. ISU will take the round in the post plant after the flood comes out from UIUC. So, the pulse pick coming out from Illinois State does manage to save what could have been a nasty post plant for them. Uh, but if Portra had been doing the job a little bit better, uh, they should have avoided a post plant altogether. There should have never been a plant going down. The pulse was playing below, but was playing too far off to get the planter before the bomb went down. So, good work from UIUC with what they had. So they need to play a little bit tighter as a team in order to get some more early picks. Uh, you can't have just a player playing completely by themselves across the map from everyone else trying to do a very important job like you did last round um, with that Maverick of uh, NK playing alone inside of Tower. But for what they had at the end of the round, their execute, they made it work. Uh, so unfortunately, the post plant positions coming out from ISU were in the favor of the defense. We start in this second half of Oregon uh, on a 3-3 split. As many bombs as they can. We start it up top. UIUC starting their defense with a cat can. Once again, the Mad King liking this Russian operator a whole lot. Played it. Showed it every round last map. And either played it or six off it. I think about half the time. Bandit coming out now from Miami Fence. He's been throwing that off all game. Likes that MP7 and those bandit batteries. Bozzy coming out now from NK. He's going to try to do a little bit of drone denial. Make it a little bit harder for the attack to drone into bomb site. Five seconds left. Okay, a lot of cat king traps just coming out in random places for the Mad King. Attackers Hoping to catch some to ankles and get a little bit of damage onto the attackers. Soften them up a bit for those gunfights. So now we see the attack make their way into the uh, into the map, and we are going to see Illinois State going for a clear on the attic. Uh, they are going to go for an attic site, take the sledge. Uh, no Maverick, but they are going to run the Thatcher Thermite Snail, and Patience going to take T2 and go for that window. Patience opening up that <laughs> Patience opening up that uh, attic window. Going to drone in, sees the bandit. Uh, bandit's playing very aggressively. He's not going to trick the wall, but he's already picked about 30 HP. He actually hasn't put anything down. He is going to trick the wall, in fact, though. He hasn't put the... But the Thermite Charge is actually going down now. And the Bandit's just going to fall back. He's actually trapped now on this blue box. Can't rotate. Patience is waiting for him on the window. He can actually go down the hatch if he really wants to. He's been droned out. Managed to drop the hatch and escape without dying. The Mozzie getting a C4. Completely misses. Does no damage to anyone. Hooked up taking a little bit of damage from the big window. So, about even even exchange from the two teams. Both nades out from Patience. Bomb has been located. And now the second EMP comes out from Arabic. As Snail gets ready to push up through Attic. It looks like it's just a, it's a plane. It's a big window drop Attic take. Diffuser. But Quite Fiber swings onto Snail. It's your bomb down in the middle of Attic. And now you have your Sledge of Patience sitting bomb on the window. Now I wonder, where is Fortra? Fortra... As I say that, it's a kill into Miami. He's just sitting outside the main door. That's your, that's your bandit off the board. A C4 gone. I do believe he had already wasted it, though. Cap came to the Mad King. is currently sitting in armory trying to hold the main stairs push. But your bomb is still down in the middle of Attic. And your hatch is open. Portrait does get NK. So, as I was saying, the the, the Attic pressure halfway gone now. And Ravik finalizes it off. Now all up to Stormy Days and the Mad King with a minute left to go. Your smoke playing inside of games gets the headshot on the Veratic. It's a great shot from Stormy. 2v3 now for UIUC, but the Sophia is in sight. Patience gets Stormy from the window. It's now all up to the Mad King inside of Trophy. The wall never got opened, so he's going to have to... He only has the Trophy door to come through, and he's been droned out. I do believe they know the he's there. So, Fortress is going to take the bomb and walk into Kids. He's just going to play on that side of the map. Patience is going to hold this attic door. And Zofia is holding the cross from deep in trophy. The Mad King just kind of sitting here. I think he understands that this round pretty much unwinnable. Hooked up though. Does hit a cap can trap. Down onto about 25 HP. But this round is all but over. And there it is. Fortune to finish off the Mad King. That's the round in favor of Illinois State.
both halves were starting out on attacking wins on the top floor. There seems to be a very attacker-sided matchup when it comes to the end of the day. You said you had a 5-1 uh, attack half on coastline for ISU, as well as a 3-2 uh, technical attack side for UIUC on coastline. So, you know, what was that? That means 8 of the 11 rounds won were attack. And so far, we have 4 of the 7 rounds won on Oregon are attack. So both these teams doing well on the attack, just playing very aggressive. Unfortunately, both teams not really doing a whole lot of good on their defenses. Their defense is playing too aggressive. So they like they like their aggression, but they know they need to know when to dial it back. Are going to see that cap can come out. Rook six picking off to the bandit, Defenders, going back up to the top floor. UIUC no knew what went wrong. They're going to try to fix it this round. Mad King still rocking his signature cap can. Uh, so we are going to see. The Russian operator back again for this round. Maybe not another one, but at least this round we will see it. Miami fans coming out on that bandit again. Try to get these walls electrified. Didn't do a whole lot of good last round. He got trapped in the middle of Attic. Managed to drop the hatch with the nade, opening it up. Instead, he's not going to try to trick it this time. He's instead just going to... He's just going to bandit it and fall back, most likely. Just going to hold from afar. Five seconds to go. Rabic on that Thatcher once again. Snail the only hard breach as they are going to opt to bring both Zofia and Ash. Not necessarily another defeated. hard breacher like I would normally recommend on this map. But since they do have Parabic, maybe not necessarily the worst thing in the world. So the attack moves into the map. We are going to see Snail, Patience, and Parabic moving to tower like we did last round. Snail going for that T3 clear just to make sure there's no one ratting up in the top floor of the big tower. One impact used, uh, two ash, sorry, not an impact, two ash charges used to clear off the bandit batteries from the master wall. Torture now opening up below in the classroom. Gets to do a little bit of a gunfight with the Jaeger. Fight fiber, no one hits any shots though. And we'll exchange zero points of damage. But the Zofia of hooked up is sitting on white stairs. He's gonna get a he's gonna walk up and kill NK. There's still two players off site. Immediate trade comes off for Miami. He's hooked up just to shoot a goo mine. So you lose your Legion, but you lose your Zofia. Two fraggers off the board now. Uh while the attic wall main gets open. So a little over half the round left in 4v4 as Y5 has moved his way, moved his way back into site. He's now just trying to swing the attic. Falls back because of a nade, but will move back towards the breach as he wants to be aggressive here. Patience back on that dorm's window. He's gonna, he's in quite far right now, between a rock and a hard place right now as he needs to either just sit here and be aggressive on this angle, or he pushes back and has to somehow kill Patience off that window. So, Patience with a lot of patience here as he's just gonna hold that angle. Sees the Jaeger for a second as he may cross back. Waiting for this Jaeger of White Fiber to push back. White Fiber taking a lot of damage now. There you go. Haravik finishes off White Fiber on that Jaeger. No more Jaeger for this round. But with a minute left to go, C4 comes out. Does not hit anything. The Mad King on the flank drops Haravik to about 10 HP, maybe about 5 HP, but does not confirm the kill. Now 4v2 in favor of ISU. Bandit dropped by Harabic. Stormy Day's fifth wow. by Patience. By but Harabic with what is that, a 4k on the round? A 3 or a 4k on the round for him. He's doing a lot of work for his team. Top fragging, tied with Patience. And Stormy Day's trying to keep his team in this as NK is yet to find the board as we head into round number 9. ISU good on their attack there. UIUC. This is their map pick. They need to be winning these rounds. Because already, they need to win out the rest of them to avoid overtime. They need to win out the rest of these four defensive rounds to avoid getting into overtime. Because that puts them in an even worse position. Uh, as they are going to be attacking. Or they will be defending first. Um, but based on their record so far, they're 0-2 on defenses. It's not, not a great track record if you're, if you're UIUC. Frost pick coming out from the Mad King. Gonna try to use those frost mats to slow down to the attack and maybe get a good, maybe get a cheeky little pick onto one of them. 
Uh, be interesting to see where they go. They are back in the basement once more, as it has it's unlocked, but I don't think it ever... They actually haven't played here in the first place. Uh, it was always unlocked, but... I think, the, the, I think a mirror of Stormy wanted to put a mirror window on that wall, but the communication was not clear enough by the team. So, it looks, it looks like UIUC is just a little bit disjointed in their efforts on their defense. Uh, and, you, and ISU is just trying to take that um, for their advantage and just try to be extremely aggressive on their attack. Once again, your utility usage from UIUC is a little bit poor. They do have shotguns uh, on on Stormy Days. I think he could bring a shotgun if he wants, but he does not have it. Um, he doesn't have that secondary, so instead they're just going to use a impact. But there is no there is no shield coming out inside of rent or inside of blue by the Jaeger of the Fiber. It's two ADSs, but you have four members of the defense sitting outside, uh, and the EMPs are now going to disable the, the going to disable the ADSs. And nades come in, two nades come in. Point Fiber takes about ten HP, but Fortra takes the opening pick as he just pushes it deep. And now the bunker wall is open for ISU. Fortra with a nice shot under the Mad King. Now 5v2 with four, we're only 45 seconds in the round. Keep that in mind. It's a very aggressive take and a very quick uh, formation of an execute coming out uh, by ISU. But NK finally does find the board on round number nine. Attackers Takes out, hooked up as he tries to push in deep. Snail now dead, Attackers bomb down. The bomb Gets recovered though. Miami Finns holding down in pillar, trying to keep his team together. Now enter a 3v3 with just over half the round. As I say that, though, Patience does get fragged out, but Miami trades it right back. So a 2v2 between these teams. Patience waiting for Miami to peek. Switches weapons out at the wrong time. Miami fans rotates around to this breach. Drone comes out by Fortra. And Fortra just takes a nasty shot onto Miami fans. Fortra now in the bomb site. All up to NK in the 1v2. He has to wait for the plant to go down, but that mirror window looking straight at him. The actual Fortra knows where he is now, as he can he can see through the mirror window. He's fully aware that the player is inside of pillars. He's just gonna call it out. He's actually gonna he's gonna swing around, maybe from E-Box. No, he's just gonna hold on the mirror window. Free fires come out from both players. Fortra wins the re-engagement. NK will get one kill this round, but will not find the scoreboard in any other matter. ISU now up to match point on Oregon. Match point, series point now. So, like I was saying at the beginning of last round, UIUC uh, a little bit disjointed in their efforts to try to come together uh, and try to build their momentum. Uh, and ISU is just taking complete advantage of that. They're just trying to steamroll through them, push through the site, be super aggressive. And, you know, so far on their attack app, it's working here on Oregon. Uh, they've won all three rounds so far. That cap can pick... I don't really think it's working out for the Mad King. I think you need something with a little bit more stopping power. Uh, if you're UIUC, you know, on their attack app, they were running the IQ, and the IQ wasn't really doing anything for them. Now they're running, they've been running the Capcan all game. And, you know, yes, while the Capcan trap is getting the occasional 50 HP off of a player, it's really not doing more than that. Um, he's getting, you know, an occasional kill. Um, locate and but other than that, they can. You know, it's not really doing anything. And we'll be going back to the basement now for round number 11, the penultimate round. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry, we're round number 10. Penultimate round is next round if we make it there. Mirror window, traps coming out now on that bunker wall. I believe that was the plan for last round, but uh, the communications were a little bit jumbled in the execution of that by the defense. UIUC now needs to hit overtime if they want to bring it to map three. They're in a real poor position now. So maybe having a little bit of trouble putting that mirror window down. Looks like he's, he's gonna finally get it though. Mirror window's down, going on both sides of the blue walls. You have your elbow wall and just your blue bunker wall to e box. Four members of the attack coming in now from E spawn. So is it going to be a full bunker take once again? It does not look like that will be the case. They are going to send Snail uh, up to T3, it looks like. Your bandit, though, of Miami Finch is currently ratting out on the T1 stairs. Here's the Sophia punch up on the door. He's going to swing. He goes for the pre fire. Doesn't catch anything, though. It's going to fall back down now. Drone comes to the tower. Your entire attacking side is either situated at the blue door, like your Sledge of Patience, or around the T1, T2 area. Miami Finns 
fires a few more shots up and then falls back down the staircase. Patience with the opening pick onto the Jaeger. I think an EMP may have helped him out there. Uh, disabling those ADSs, but it's a good nade from him. Especially with dealing with this mirror window. I can't believe no one on the defense, especially Stormy, he's playing on this mirror window. I can't believe he didn't help out his teammate from preventing the death. But you can see the Goyo of NK hiding in that corner. I don't think he was spotted out. He locks wall now. He must hash now open. And NK is going to have to fall off. But Rabbit can go down by NK though. And Goyo in that corner. Ratting out. He's now trapped here though. He's going to have to either get another kill or he's going to die on this. He takes a lot of damage from the hatch and from the blue door. Patience still holding the angle. Because he's waiting for someone to peek him. The Ash of Portra is going to peek the hall, or he peeked down the stairs, but Snail's now inside as he drops the box hatch. Stormy Days fall, follows up into Bunker, though, and now you have two players inside a blue and one inside a freezer, as you have hooked up dropping the e-box hatch a bomb has been located. and picking off NK, but now it's all up to the, the it's all up to Cap Can and Mira, and hooked up will take out Mad Kings, now all up to the Mira of Stormy Days in a 1v3. Hooked up is low HP and Fortress about 35 as well. But the snail going on that plant, he has to fight through two players. He sees the he sees the shin of snail, but he's not gonna do attack, anything about it. And the plant will go down. 40 seconds now for Stormy to clutch this out. And will he get one? No. Snail closes it out. Illinois State wins. 7-4, 7-3. That's a 2-0 win for Illinois State over UIUC. Strong attack game coming out from both teams, but in the end, Illinois State just was able to win more attack rounds. So they both won close to the same amount of defense defensive rounds, but ISU, at the end of the day, just took it to the top. We'll be back with an interview from Snail right after this.
Welcome back, everyone. We just got finished with our match tonight. Illinois State taking the win 2-0 over UIUC. I am joined here today by Snail from Illinois State. Snail, how are y'all feeling after that game? Uh, we're feeling pretty good. Uh, for the first time this season, we're, uh, we have a winning record. So, um, got to be pretty happy about that. It's good to yeah. hear. Good to hear. Like you said, winning record. You did come off the win last week and loading onto it this week now. So, you are now 3-2. and two in the standings going into week number six. How are y'all preparing for playoffs? Because those last saw you were one position, I believe, outside of the playoff ranks. Uh, so how are y'all getting ready for that? Um, I mean, we're just we're just trying to like get all the games in week to week. Uh, it's like kind of ramped up a lot uh, with like face it starting and then CA all that. Like we have just a lot of matches and our lives are pretty busy as well. So we're just trying to make sure that we can kind of play all the games and we're trying to practice at least once a week, you know, uh, bring in some new strats, hopefully like just learn, learn some of these maps a little bit better, uh, new systems that people haven't seen before because our playoff run in CR6 really took a toll on our strats and uh, teams really just, you know, uh, dove into the VODs and just full scouted a lot of things. So uh, our map, it's getting a lot harder to uh, use the same stuff. So we're kind of reworking a lot of our stuff right now. So, um, that's kind of why we got left on the, you know, you're kind of an in between here and face it because we're, we don't really have our new stuff fully prepared yet. And we, we don't really want to use the old stuff because some teams like actually VOD review and like really, really work out for like a, a face it match. So, uh, we just are kind of trying to get a good mix right now, but hopefully when but come playoff time, we'll have, you know, um, our maps figured out and, uh, ready to go. Good to hear. Yeah. I completely understand where you're coming from. After one big event, especially that playoff run you had in the winter uh, leading up to that final game versus Akron. Y'all used a whole lot of stuff. And like you said, I'm sure there's teams going through all those VODs because, you know, there sure are a lot of them since y'all made it so deep. Um, this is the final question. Uh, anything you'd like to say to the fans of ISU in the chat? Uh, shout out to Redbird e Shorts. Shout out to the boys, Patience, uh, Harabic, Fortra, Jake. Oh, that's hooked up. Um, and our coach, Dr. Ty. Um, Thank you all for watching, and I hope that everyone enjoyed the match. Other than that, that's about it. All right. Thank you so much, Snail. Thank you all for watching the match tonight. Uh, maybe back Saturday with a default time match. Not exactly sure what that will be just yet. But thank you all for watching, and good night.